It's running? Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to tell you about a hash lang called Minimart that I've been working on. Uh, and it is going to be a much higher level, more abstract type of a talk than Brian just gave. Uh, it, there's going to be a bit of code uh, towards the end to give you a feel for the system. But I'm going to try and motivate just uh, one interesting idea about the system, which is that actors uh, need extra features as part of the language in order to let people build the systems they want to build with them. So actors are pretty influential. They crop up in a lot of places. There are a couple of uh, popular programming languages that people are using, Erlang and Scala, that have taken actors on board as the concurrency model. Um, but they've influenced other systems as well. So Rust's concurrency model, for instance, has some of the ideas from actors in it. And uh, HTML5's web workers are pretty similar to the actor model uh, themselves. For languages that have taken other approaches to concurrency, you'll frequently find libraries out there that let people use actors. And you can even think of large-scale networks as kind of actor systems on their own. Uh, so uh, you can think of HTTP. Each web server is a kind of actor. Each request you make is a kind of message that's sent to it. So Minimart takes on board the basic actor model, but then it goes a little further. The basic actor model, if we imagine that this circle here now represents an actor, <laughs> uh, every actor has a mailbox. And every mailbox is labeled with an address. Now, the address is assigned by the system. It's not something that the programmer allocates. And so the programmer doesn't have any control over that address. And that'll be important a little later. The messages queued in the mailbox, ready for the actor to process, are then sent through a function. It's the event handler function. And in Minimart, it's a, it can be a pure function. You don't have to write any mutable code at all. Um, the function in return sends actions out to the environment and it can choose to either send messages to its peers or to spawn new actors to run alongside it. The third thing that the event handler can do is update its local state and it can do this in a pure functional way or an immutable way you get to choose. But the key thing is that it's updating only its local state. In an actor system, of course, each actor encapsulates mutable state so you don't have any global shared state. So that's the basic actor model. Um, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too simple. So when people are working with these systems, they come up against these problems again and again. And uh, often what happens is that um, the people who supply their programming language will also supply some libraries for dealing with some of these issues. Uh, or uh, in, in extreme cases, uh, the programmers are left to fend for themselves and they have to re-implement these patterns again and again. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to give little hints of it or little demos of uh, event broadcasting uh, and then the notions of crash signaling or exit signaling. Uh, which you also see in languages like Erlang, uh, and another concept that's related called readiness notification, which doesn't crop up in very many uh, actor systems at all. And finally, uh, I'll just uh, briefly mention some of the approaches to distribution that I've been taking. So Minimart hopes to provide a uniform linguistic solution to, to these issues and, and more. Um, the key change, the key difference between the basic actor model and the Minimart model is that in actors, usually you're sending messages point to point. Each time you send a message, it goes to exactly one, well, zero or one other actor. Um, whereas in Minimart, we use publish subscribe um, so that you can send a single message and it goes out to multiple receivers based on pattern matching. And this is already a bit of a change. Instead of using actor addresses, you now get to use high-level patterns, which are under application control or domain control. Um, as a consequence of publish subscribe, um, we actually gain a feature for uh, signaling the state of actors back and forth between uh, in, inside, inside actor groups um, that's automatic based on which subscriptions exist uh, at the time. And those are signaled back and forth with routing events. And I'll show you how they're used for some common patterns in a minute. And finally, um, Minimart addresses questions of composition and, and distribution. Uh, by, by grouping together actors into um, whole networks of actors and then layering those. So it sort of promotes the idea of a network into a, a first-class idea uh, and each network becomes an actor itself. So first of all, this event broadcast problem. If we imagine the, the classic GUI uh, model view problem where uh, we might be using an actor for each model and an actor for each view, we have here a model and three views on it. And the problem is that when we update the model's value, we need to send notifications out to each of these subscribing actors. Uh, in a traditional actor system, we have to do that one at a time, which means we have to have somewhere, somewhere in the system, we have to have a list that's maintaining who is interested 
in this update. We have to maintain that list. We have to take care to remove entries from it when uh, maybe a view might crash or be removed. It's, it's a complex problem, and so ideally we'd want a library or a language feature to do that for us. A, a similar issue, though a, a little different, is uh, something uh, called crash signaling, which is when if an actor dies in the middle of having a productive conversation with other actors, uh, we want some kind of a signal to be sent out to uh, its peers to let them know that it's gone, to let them clean up whatever conversational state they had around. Um, and this too requires a kind of subscriber list. Uh, and you have to have that somewhere in the system. It has to be managed, it has to be cleaned up, and so on. The opposite problem is a thing that I've been calling readiness notification, which is when you have some clients of a service and they want to make use of the service, but the service isn't running yet. It might have just crashed and be in the process of being rebooted, uh, or you might have suffered a network partition, or uh, you might be just starting the system for the first time, and it might not have, everything might be starting in parallel and the clients became ready before the service. So they need some way to express the idea that they should be told when the service appears, given an event, and then they can begin their productive discussions with the service. There's one thing that's, uh, that's interesting about this picture. Um, well, okay, so we need the subscriber list again, sorry. There's one thing that's interesting about this picture besides the fact that, you know, we have a, a signal coming out that requires a subscriber list, and that is that actors are addressed by a system assigned identifier, not under your control. So if you're gonna say, hey, let me know when this actor appears, how are you gonna say it? You can't say, let me know when actor 16,000 turns up because that number hasn't been allocated yet. Instead, you want to use a higher level notion, one that's under application control, of a service name. And in most active systems, they include a thing called a naming service, which maps from a high level application specific identifier to a low level implementation specific identifier. So we need a naming service to solve this problem. So in general then, we have a bunch of actors and they're talking to each other. They want to use multicast and broadcast communication, use publish, subscribe. They want to be told when each other, when uh, other actors come and go. How are we going to do this? The, the main question is where do we put the state? Where do we put the subscriber list? And where do we put the naming service? A common approach is to reify the medium of communication. So in many actor systems, you'll have an actor that's responsible for routing communications between others in the group. So instead of talking directly to each other, they'll talk to this actor in the middle. And that actor in the middle will uh, take care of updating subscriber lists, cleaning them up when other actors uh, are removed or crash, and so on. But there's another interesting component in the system we haven't looked at yet, and that is the context that they all run in. They all run in this, this container. Um, there's, there's something that drives them all and, uh, and hooks them up. So really, there are two kinds of network here. The first is this high-level one, where you get all of these rich, interaction possibilities and a lot of you know exit signaling and subscription list management. But then there's the lower level one, which is where you're sending messages point to point only based on actor addresses. So what Minimart does is promote the network to an actor. You still have to route all of the communications through this actor just like you did before, except this actor is now in a perfectly placed position to take care of the shared state among the actors in the group. And because you've promoted the network to an actor, you can treat it as an actor in turn and have it in a larger network. This gives you the possibility of choosing an implementation for your system. So you can treat a whole group of actors as a single atomic service. Or if you had a single atomic service, you can break it up into components and uh, the clients won't notice the difference. They get a, a uniform interface to them. And of course, the whole group uh, is really just one very large actor. So moving on to having a look at some of the code. So Minimart is a hashling, and you can install it using a Rayco package install. Um, this is a big picture of basically examples of the syntax. I'm just gonna walk through some of the, um, the features that you see here. So when you write a program using Minimart, very often you'll be defining a protocol of your own, and that's this uh, struct definition up here. The idea is that actors should be exchanging messages of this form. Spawning an actor is done with just the actor form. You give each actor a name, and that's uh, useful for when you get uh, event traces out of the system so that you can debug it and see what's going on. Each actor has state variables that are private to itself. Now these are implemented in a pure functional way, but the code that updates them looks a little bit imperative. Uh, it really is pure functional under the hood. There's a lot of macros going on. Um, and all of these variables are visible. Their scope is, is all of the forms contained within this actor form. 
in order for actors to hear about each other, they need to hear about um, peers that share common interests with them. And so the idea is that if you get an actor to tell you it's interested in talking about a particular topic, and other actors to tell you they're interested in hearing about a particular topic, the network can not only route messages back and forth between them when they have things to say, but it can also inform them about each other's comings and goings based on these shared interests. So when an actor subscribes to a pattern, uh, the incoming messages can have uh, binders in them, which are then visible to the handler form, which is uh, in the subscription form. And here you see uh, the crazy syntax that I've been experimenting with for doing pure functional updates. It looks imperative, it's really not. I'm still experimenting with it. And this is where you get to the, the meat of being able to see other actors coming and going. This actor here is watching out to see who all is out there wanting to talk about my messages on particular topics. And what it's gonna do, this particular definition, is gonna collect all of those topics together bound by pattern in the topic selector and group them together into a single set called all topics. And whenever that set changes, whenever the network detects a change in connectivity, it runs the handler expression again. And all topics is bound in here and so you can get a list of all of the available topics and that'll grow and shrink as other actors come and go. And of course you can do that from the other polarity as well. You can watch subscribers, not just advertisers for actors. So let's see some examples. First, this model view problem. Here we have the code at the top uh, that I'm going to be talking about. On the left, a view of the network sort of from the top in high-level terms. Uh, this is just the actors and how they relate to each other without thought for how it's implemented. And then here we have a, um, a slightly lower level view where you see not only the actors involved, but also their substrate and how it connects to the substrate. That's the network that is grouping them all together. So in this actor, we have a single state value, the, uh, the, the value of the model, which is currently 400. It responds to increment messages that it's sent. So other actors might send an increment message. And in return, what it, when it receives one, what it'll do is it'll update its private state. And then it will send a message, new value, with the new value, um, out to any interested peers. And uh, the thing to note there is that it's separately, it's advertising its intent to send this message. And that is visible to other actors so they can see when the model is ready or if the model crashes. Switching to the view, the view subscribes to those new value messages, um, which the, uh, the model is, is prepared to issue. And of course, it's able to bind uh, parts of the message and then refer to them in the handler expressions. Now, the model doesn't know anything about the existence of the views. It's just broadcasting this out so you can add additional views to your heart's content and none of the existing code needs to change. Yes. Um, so, how is the new value? Great question. Okay, so the idea is, uh, the question was how do you scope an interaction between actors? And there are two ways you can do it. One is to refine the protocol that you use so that the new value message would include not only the value, but also an indication, an explicit indication of what the scope was. Uh, and then actors could choose to listen to subsets of all new value messages based on that extra field. The other way that you could do it is to put all of the relevant actors together into a group, put them in a network, and then put that in a wider network. And then you would isolate individual conversations by putting them in separate containers. So the next thing I wanted to show was some code for implementing uh, supervisors, which are a pattern you see in Erlang and Acker. Uh, and this will demonstrate the crash signaling and the, and the readiness notification. So the job of a supervisor is to keep track of some other service. And if the service isn't there, it should start it. And if it is there, it should do nothing until that changes, at which point it should restart it. So to begin with, this service is observing subscribers to the pattern which includes the division request symbol. So it's watching to see if anyone is listening to that pattern. And, in t and when it hears a change to that, it updates a Boolean variable called server running, which is named server running. Huh? Uh, initially, of course, there's no service running and that'll be false, so it'll check that, and not server running will be true, so it'll call the spawn server routine to get it started. Spawn server just starts a new actor, and the actor subscribes to exactly the pattern that we're interested in. So when we switch back, when we switch back to the, uh, the supervisor code, um, the network will have noticed that there's 
a match here that the supervisor is interested in that pattern and that the server has just said that it's now listening to that pattern. And so it'll rerun the handler code. Uh, the server running will be true now, and so it'll take no action. If the server crashes in future, then its subscriptions will automatically be withdrawn. And that will cause another change that the network notices. The network will again rerun this handler code. It'll be false now, and so it'll spawn the server again. Uh, the final thing I wanted to touch on was the idea of just, yeah. Uh, any that had been sent by the server will carry on and be delivered. I'm sorry? To the, oh, to the queue. Okay, so the queues are held in the network. Uh, the idea is basically if you do have a crash, then you don't know whether a message was delivered or not unless you've had some signal from the recipient that it was, it was received. Designing protocols like that can be a bit interesting. Uh, it's completely lost. Yep, so when an actor crashes, its private state's lost. Everything else stays untouched, and then they get these signals from their peers, and they can choose to update their state to match. So because we're taking a pure functional approach to actors, um, we can do things like carve off um, a part of this actor tree. Um, because there's really just this one sort of thin, pure functional interface connecting it to the rest of the world. So if we were to, for example, design a WebSockets-based communication protocol, then we could uh, partition a system into a piece that runs in the browser and a piece that runs in Racket on the server side. And so I actually have a little implementation that lets you write JavaScript actors using the same framework and lets them communicate with other actors via a Racket server. Now, there's a lot of things that I couldn't tell you about and couldn't show you. It's a, a sort of a rich system, and I'm still experimenting with it. The syntax that you see there is subject to change if anyone wants to try it out and uh, has feedback for me. I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm working on documentation. Uh, I'm also working on performance. I have um, approaches to making the system uh, efficient. And I'm working on distribution, uh, a way of making uh, network protocols connecting pieces that, that use this model um, efficient as well. So in conclusion, uh, Minimart adds actors to Racket, but it goes a little bit beyond basic actors, and it lets actors observe each other's presence and update their own state in response. It also groups and layers actors so that you can distribute them and compose them uh, more freely. Um, so thank you. So we have time for maybe one or two questions. Uh, okay, so um, crashes are detected um, because each actor's event handler is a pure function. That means the network, when it calls into the actor, can just wrap it in an exception handler. It catches any of the exceptions and then decides that that's a death event and you know, propagates it through the, the remainder of the state. Okay, so when you're talking about partitioning the network into something that's not even running in the racket virtual machine, would that then you're just catching like network exceptions at that point? You can, you can do that. The, one of the interesting things about that is that you now have two levels at which you can see a crash. One is a failure of connectivity between two isolated bubbles of actors. So that there might be a TCP link connecting them. If that link goes away, that might be something you want to respond to. But at a separate level, just because the link's gone away doesn't mean that the, the actors over here are crashed. It just means you don't know much about them recently. Uh, so the link could be reestablished and then you'd be back in touch with them again. So Minimart actually gives you a way of looking at both of those as separate disconnection events, different kinds of crashes. Um, do you implement promise pipelining or any form of promises? Uh, no, because uh, Minimart doesn't care what computational model you use within an actor and doesn't care how you express the protocols between actors. You can use any of the, um, the, uh, the features from any language that you'd like uh, to build your own protocols. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so promise pipelining is something you could use, um, and it would be interesting to see how it integrated. Uh, thank you. Yeah.